Often the story is that the children have been puffy off and on for a while. So I like woke up and like my eye was all swollen. Sometimes he'd wake up from his naps with his eyes all swollen and puffy. They may have even been treated for allergies because people have noticed that they've had facial swelling or things like that. And we thought it was maybe a allergic reaction. I thought it must be a reaction to maybe the makeup that they put on her. And often what happens is grandma comes to visit and basically grandma's response is, holy, what's wrong with your child? My mom noticed that his stomach was really bloated. But because the parents are seeing the child every day, they don't notice the gradual swelling and swelling. And she said, Kara, there's something wrong. They go to a doctor, and the physician identifies excessive fluid. So I gained 46 pounds of fluid. All of a sudden, my body starts to retain water. And I looked down at my feet. They were bulging out of my penny loafers. And they check blood tests, and they check urine tests, and they find that there's a low level of protein in the blood, and all that protein is being leaked in the urine. And that's how the typical story begins. And that's when the doctors realized there was something wrong with my kidneys. It was a syndrome. I remember the term syndrome. He has nephrotic syndrome. My husband and I looked at each other and was like, what is that? I had nephrotic syndrome. And I have nephrotic syndrome. I have this kidney disease called nephrotic syndrome. You know, that word in itself sounded so overwhelming. All the medical terms sounded like a foreign language and scary. And then his doctor comes back in. She's like, put your phones down, get off your phones. Everything you're reading is negative. It may not all be true. <laughs> I always tell people, if you put 100,000 children in the Rose Bowl, which is a scary thought, 16 of them would have nephrotic syndrome. So it's considered a rare disorder. There's no real cause. There's no real cure. These are not acute illnesses. These are chronic illnesses. 16 <laughs> years is a long time to be sick. I've had 23 years. You're always sick, sometimes less so, but sometimes you know, horribly so. So there's not one aspect of your life that's not completely turned over. So the kidneys are the Rodney Dangerfield of organs. They just don't get no respect. People ignore them until something goes wrong. So what the kidneys do is they work 24-7, filtering the blood, getting rid of toxins, getting rid of impurities. All the fluid you drink, whether it's milk or juice or beer, has to go somewhere, and that's the kidneys. And so they work in the background and no one gives them a second thought unless something goes wrong. And I think of them as coffee filters. And so the urine is like the coffee that goes through the filter and all the things you want to keep, like the protein and the red blood cells, get filtered and stay in the bloodstream. But in nephrotic syndrome, what happens is there's damage to the filter and you start leaking protein and proteins which your body depends on, proteins which should be circulating to do their proper function, are leaked from the kidney, come in the urine, and are lost to the body. And so in nephrotic syndrome, all the complications that people see are because of these many different proteins that are being lost to the body and their function is lost. So probably the most common complaint is swelling. Swelling of the eyes, swelling of the feet, sometimes it's swelling of the abdomen, but the most common thing is actually swollen eyes. This often will prompt a visit to their primary care doctor. In the case of nephrotic syndrome, the reason they're swollen is because they're leaking protein into their urine. So the primary test is a urine test for protein. And in fact, actually, patients with nephrotic syndrome eventually learn how to do this test themselves. I had to pee in a cup. So every day, Emmy would go, Emmy, go pee in a cup. I was really awkward. I would uh, dip, dip that in the urine, and then you look at the color, and you match it up with uh, this here. Typically, if they have swelling and then a urine that shows protein leakage, is usually indication for referral to a nephrologist. If you think of nephrotic syndrome as sort of a family of the, these diseases. There are three main causes of nephrotic syndrome. There's minimal change nephrotic syndrome, which is the most common cause in children. There's focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, which I will refer to as FSGS. And there's membranous nephropathy, which is the least common of those three. For children, the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome is minimal change nephrotic syndrome. Minimal change tends to afflict young children. He's got nephrotic syndrome, minimal change. We Presumably. got the good news that, that she was minimal change. Presumably he's minimal change because he's been so responsive to steroids. Which is really just a description of what patients look like because they have minimally changed kidneys at that point. So the minimal change is the appearance on biopsy of a basically normal filter. And so something has triggered their immune system to attack the kidneys. Essentially, her body made a mistake. That's how I explained it to her, but now that's the way I explain it to adults that's too. Right. You probably get technical. So like, the I just dumb it down. The immune system is attacking the kidney. Oh, yeah, yeah. Part of our treatment is to try to reset the immune system. Just like if your computer's frozen or doing the wrong thing, you shut it off and turn it back on, you reboot it. With prednisone, which is our most useful drug, we do the same thing. We suppress the immune system and allow it to reboot, hopefully with the nephrotic syndrome going away. They will respond to prednisone about 80% of the time. 
and they'll do that within five or six weeks. So the treatments, unfortunately, while they can be quite effective, do have um, a lot of side effects. Yeah, you know, the side effects of prednisone are legion. I mean, I, I could go on. I would just feel very emotional. Depression. The rage. I had all this rage. When they say roid rage, I believe. He was like, <laughs> I'm frustrated, and I don't know why. My face blew up. My daughter did not want me to pick her up at school. Yeah, so when I'm on prednisone, I'll get, like, super hungry. You can't sleep. It's like drinking. 15 espressos. Definitely more energetic. She was just so active and like eating all the time. And I did not know it was gonna be that bad. For all the medicines we use that suppress the immune system, there is a higher risk of infections. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to think what could happen if you suppress your immune system. If things go well, after a couple of months of prednisone by mouth, the nephrotic syndrome goes away and you can wean the child off of the prednisone and the child can do well. Yeah, she's been in remission, and we, we've been lucky. There hasn't really been a relapse scare. He typically would have like three to maybe four relapses per year. Christian's had over 40 relapses. He's missed countless days of school. Yeah. You know, it's been hard. Everyone's story is different. So if the prednisone doesn't work, that increases the risk there's something else going on, like focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, or FSGS. Yo, know, I had bad news. I, I've got FSGS. I was re-biopsied, yeah. then re-diagnosed um, FSGS. I am diagnosed diagnosed with the FSGS. And I actually don't remember what it exactly stands for. You know, it's a, it's a long acronym. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Minimal change does not usually lead to kidney failure. FSGS, which is the more difficult version and more damaging to the kidneys. The story doesn't always end very well. Minimal change might be able to turn into FSGS. I'm still pretty worried about getting that. Really? Mm -hmm. It basically refers to specific parts of your kidney are being scarred. And there's filters in there that allow this protein to escape. So bottom line is your kidney's being scarred. They don't regenerate themselves. So the more scarring, the more loss of kidney functions. And usually we can actually put this illness into remission long term. At this point, I've been in re full, full remission, I think for about eight months. How, how do you feel right now physically? Very well. I don't ever feel good. I mean, that's, that's a real tricky thing. I don't know that I take this fistful of medications. I'm still taking lisinopril and Liptor. And it turns out that while we have some medicines that work fairly well with FSGS, some patients just don't respond. Well, nothing helped me. Each patient walks their own unique course. The disease can be different from one patient to the next. The doctor there said, um, I give your kidneys two to five years to fail and they failed in two. The worst case scenario, but one that we often have to face, which is if the kidney function continues to decline, going on dialysis or trying to get a kidney transplant. Yeah, they transplanted my dad's kidney into me. Unfortunately, it never, what they call, opened up, so I never started urinating. But then after three months, it did come out. And when they took it to the path lab, it was infested with the disease. FSGS, when it recurs in a transplant, is one of the things which is most depressing to me as a physician, because we don't have a cure. The disease just, you know, just had attacked it. And if you do another kidney transplant, it's like a 99% chance that kidney's gonna get it, and that kidney's gonna fail. So then I had um, a cadaver in 97, that was in and out in a year, and the same thing in um, 2004. And it just, each time, it just attacks it. So I don't urinate, because there's, there's no kidneys to process the fluid, therefore, into the ureter, into the bladder. Um, so everything that I drink goes into my bloodstream and is cleaned out or removed at dialysis. So dialysis is what we do when a patient's kidneys do not work anymore. Patients go three times a week to a dialysis clinic. Each treatment is three to four hours long. They are hooked up to a machine. The blood is removed, processed, the same way your kidneys would do. So it takes out the bad and puts in the good. That's my dialyzer, that's the kidney. Oh, on, on that, the, yeah. on the... And then what we call the clean blood is returned to the patient. My iPad is my best friend here. <laughs> and then we also see yeah. membranous nephropathy. Which is the least common of those three. It's the most common form of nephrotic syndrome in Caucasian adults. In the filter of the kidney, you get little tiny deposits along the filtering surface. And that leads to massive amounts of protein in the urine where people get very swollen. You know, I always encourage my patients to the best of their abilities to keep living their life. So if they're supposed to be going to school, working, raising their family, Keep doing those things. Don't let your disease take over. They do oftentimes have to make dietary modifications. No salt, or very little salt. When I'm sick, I can only drink a certain amount of water, and I can't have salty food, because mm -hmm. that makes me thirstier. Water follows salt, so if you're in relapse, mm -hmm. 
spilling protein in your urine, you eat a lot of salt, you're gonna get more swollen. Um, and then also moderating the amount of protein they eat, um, just so as not to you know, fuel the fire. The other thing is, one of the best things you can do is see if there are studies out there. The opportunity to enroll in a study gives you the opportunity to maybe be involved in something which is curative, but also merely being in a study helps us move the understanding forward. When I started doing this, there was a 50-50 chance that a kidney transplant would last one year. Now, kidney transplants have a 95% chance of lasting one year. And we talk about 15 and 20 year survivals, and that's only happened because people participated in studies. Of course, I wish this never happened. But it's made me who I am today. It's made me strong, and it's made me confident, and it's made me appreciative of the small things. Take the healthy days and enjoy them, you know. They need to change their emotional focus from cure to let's take this one day at a time. Let's get the best day we can so that this can be a good day and tomorrow can be a good day because we just don't know what's going to happen. It's an amazing lesson what you learn with a chronic illness. You start to take those moments, these little things, and they're just, they're amazing, you know? The will to survive is unbelievable. When you're relapsing, like it sucks and like the first three months in remission, it still sucks. But after that, it's not too bad. Don't give up.